Hello everybody, Sam Martin with Sucking Fettles again. Um, today I'm doing a, another tarpon fly video. It's been a few weeks since I've done a tarpon fly. Um, and it's the tarpon toad. Uh, you can tie them in a range of colours. Tonight I'll be tying a black and purple for you, for the video. Like that. Um, but you can tie them chartreuse's, oranges. You can see they've got orange and yellow with a tiger barb zonker strip. Uh, here I've got a sort of olivey green. It's been recommended to me for a for the area that we'll be visiting this in my next trip. But also black and purple. With like this one. So the toad um, is quite a small fly. Generally, um, I think a lot of people tie them, think they're bigger than, or they should be bigger than, than, than they actually are. Um, I'm so I'm tying this on a one oat, quite a small tarpon fly. Just like that in the, that other groove of the jaws, got a better grip. Okay. So it's a one or TMCO 600 SP, but you could use uh, an Onoraki if you like. And I'm just running on a bed of 6 or purple thread. Taking it to the... So it's just in line with the barb, maybe slightly in front. And I've got my length of Zonka. Pre cut and I mean, it's not long, it's only like a couple of inches long. Um, I'll tie it in, and I like to, I like to tie it a wee bit longer than a lot of people. Um, you see, a lot of salt water tires, they just tie it like a wee short butt, but I like for security, maybe it's because of um, my, ba my initial background of like traditional wet flies and stuff. Um, I like to run it along the body. It just gives you a, a stronger tie. You know, um, it will never move, it's locked, it's really locked in. And then to prevent it from snagging up, just post it tight, you know, just like you would if you were tying a parachute post or anything like that. A wee st stiff fouling guard with your thread wraps, and then make sure it's just make sure it's sitting straight. You can twist it and push it around until you get how you like, and then just for a bit of durability, I like to come in with some uh, some head cement. You don't really need to do this if you don't want to, but. You know, I don't want you don't want it busting just on like you've just jumped a fish. Um, well, I don't think I don't anyway. So, just put a wee bit of head cement on there and let it sit while I get my collar ready. For the collar, I'm just using. Uh, oh, I nearly forgot. I'm adding. A, I'm, I'm adding a wee bit of flash to this, which is just using uh, angel hair. The colour I'm using is purple ice. It's a lot of a less angel here. And I'll just just fold it over the thread, tie it in, in a V, and I'll just run back to about level with the the, the bottom of my snarf guard just to make sure it's tied in, and then I'll just sort of taper it at different lengths. You want the longer stuff just about the length of the the zonker. I wouldn't go much more than that. And don't don't go crazy with your flash. Um just put enough in. And you can always pull it away when you're fishing. You know, you, you can't add it when you're on the water but you can take it away easily enough. So the collar this is going to be three 
uh, Mara Bubble with the Crows I'm just using. Nice and sparse, nice and wispy. Um, and it's dead simple, dead easy to tie. I tie them so they're about half, they go back about half the length of the the zonker here, not the hide. They're a wee, they're a wee bit more than half the hide. And I'll just flip it, tie another one on the other side in the bottom, same length. Put it on just plenty to hold it. Just adjust that slightly. Just make sure everything's matched up the same length. And then the last one I just like to put on top. I find it easier to put the, the third third feather on top um, rather than starting on top and working around. Just, you can see a bit better. And just take your thread back so that the tie in points level all the way around. Like you don't want your thread creeping forward so that you've got an uneven tie-in point. Um, if if you want to have sort of more marabou movement, you could have it. You could have the tie-in point slightly forward if you like. Um, but again, it's your fly. It's up to you. And then, same as before, I'll just trim this marabou at the length of the body. It's not that that long. Yeah. Just tidy that up a bit, it's a wee bit long. Yeah. And I'm going to cover it with thread. Just loose open turns at first. Right. And then work my way back over it. And you can press it and squeeze it so you get a nice sort of slope. Then, like a, a taper that helps it helps you to build your body later. And again, a lot of guys just leave it here and then they sort of tie on the bump and th th that works. But if you want to build durability into your flies, extra thread turns. I'm using a six hot thread instead of a three hot, even though it's quite a, a big hook. Because the extra thread turns just give you that extra toughness in the fly. Um, and I've put and I've put some head cement, just your hard as nails or whatever it is you use, it's fine. On the butt ends there, and I'm just going to take my thread over it a couple of times. Touch and turns, get it covered up, and just. Just get a wipe to take away any excess. It's quite good. But not quite there. You don't want any gaps, basically. A nice smooth body of thread. And that's that's quite tough now. That's quite big. You know you've you've got the head cement right through the fly. And it'll, it'll bond even to the hook. So, the body of the toad's just um, basically like American style. Uh, if I'm tying like two tone, you know, this is like both black and purple. I'm going to. I like to mix up my my uh, EP fibers. Um, So I'm going to go have little stripes, black and purple. So I take my length. I don't pre-cut it, right? Um, I've seen other videos where the guys tying it, they're like, "Oh, I've got, I've cut like five inch long lengths." I don't know why anybody would do that. It makes it much harder to handle if you leave it. If you leave it long, you've got this big. bit of fibre just to grab, it makes it much more manoeuvrable. So I just took uh, two wraps going one way and then pulled the end square and two wraps the other way just figure eight, figure eight and, like X wraps and then just to tighten it up I'll pull the fibre up and back and wind the thread back 
just to tighten the tighten up the the lock and wraps there. And I'll trim it now trim it. Leave it fairly long, you know, like a thumbnail length or something. Um so that you you've got plenty for trimming later. And it's just the same again. I lay my I'll lay the I'll turn the vice so you can see it. I lay the EP fibre facing that way. One, two, three. Right. And you can quite easily just twist it and then put your thread in between. Right. It's much easier when you've got the longer piece. Right. And I don't have a fly shop, I'm not trying to sell you materials, so I'd rather you had an easier time tying the fly and wasted less than cut wee inch bits and was throwing hunters away. So, I've gone for two lengths of black there, two bands of black. Just, I like, you know, I want that black to be kind of a, a good band before I go and switch to the purple. And then, now I'm just going to alternate all the way along. Black, purple, black, purple. And then, you just repeat the process, and it's three or four times, you know. Uh, one, two, three. Turn it. Your first wrap you can sort of do, you know, on your offhand, just to help it. One, two, three. Three wraps. Pull it back. Tighten up. And I'm just going to leave that so I don't lose it. Repeat the process. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you can see also the long the long bit that I've just left that actually gives you a bit you know it makes it again easier to get your bobbin in and out without catching any fibre. I'll leave the black this time. Come and trim. Get my purple in. One, two, three. Turn. One, two, three. Pull it. Then get your lock and wraps in. Uh, black. Oops. It's just nice. And you can, I like to use slightly thinner bunches um, and put more in when I tie the toad. I just think you get a nicer finish. Especially if you're like striping it, you get sort of more stripes. And you can just make it suit yourself, you know. That's fine. I'll just leave that there. So if you just sort of do that and tug it back, it'll sort of sit for you. And then the last bunch here, just at the, at the, sort of on the slope. One, two, three. Turn it and grip it. Oops. There you go. Three. Same again. Just make sure the fibres are sitting where you like. At the right side. Pull it back. And lock it down. Trimming it's up to you when you trim it. Um, I kind of quite like to trim it before I get the eyes on. Uh, just for my own sake, really. I find it much easier. But you can tie the eyes first and then trim. But what I like to do is I just sweep all the fibres vertically. And then... Do that. 
is your nice even body. Um, for where I'm going, to be where I'll be fishing these, um, the guides recommend it quite small. Uh, you could tie them bigger, but I've trimmed it. I've used I use roughly like a spool as a guide. You know, I can sort of make it just a wee bit weird than a spool, or just roughly the size of a spool if I set it on top. That lets me know I've kind of gauged the size just about right. So, the last thing, and this I would say is optional really with the toad, is the eyes. Um, unless you're tying a weighted toad, maybe for another species, um, I would just... This is optional. If you're weighting it then obviously you've got to use bead chain. But I'm using nylon or plastic eyes here. I'm just figure eighting them in quite simply. There we go. And then a couple of up finishes just to hold it. And another. That's good. Trim away your waist thread. And then just to again keep everything nice and solid. I like to come in with a wee bit of cement super glue along the wraps. Along the wraps across the back of the the sort of American style body. And then I'll flip it, which you can see. There we go. And I just get plenty in there. I'll probably give this two coats along the the underside. Just to sort of seal everything and make it tough. And there you have it, tarp and toad. Uh, classic tapping pattern, you can use it for other species as well um, I quite like tying small smaller ones for um, like we honeycomb grouper any sort of like some of the smaller jacks and stuff mangrove jacks, things like that yeah, I know the guys in Australia like to use, but use them for barramundi as well so tie some up for whatever predatory fish I hope you enjoyed that guys, thanks for watching, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more HD fly videos, bye!